Hi, this is Mark Schaefer. I'm not sure who I represent this time. Sometimes it's art associations, sometimes it's historical society. Uh, doesn't matter, I guess. I'm just a uh, resident of Fairfield who enjoyed having Ben Taylor as a member of our community who is now sorely missed. We're at his estate auction, or the, the site of it, just before the preview on Friday, February 18th, 19, no, it's not 19 anymore, 2000. 2000. And I'm joined by Marianne Milhone, Ben's cousin's daughter. Yes, good for you. Okay, and so how, explain the exact relationship. Okay, my mother was Ben's cousin. Okay. And if we come to them, we may find a baby picture All right, right here great, at some point. Great. Of the two of them, and they both were born and grew up in Fairfield. Okay. Um, we're just going to make a tour of the uh, auction site, and as we pick up things, we're going to reminisce about Ben and his wife Lucille. And I think a good place to start, since we're right here, is to talk about Ben's quilt collection. I just happened across this. This is a Garfield and Arthur campaign uh, cotton. It's fabric made uh, with the images of Garfield and Chester A. Arthur. And of course, Garfield was assassinated early in his term. I think he was elected in 1880. And the, the Taylors were known for their quilt collection. And I believe it was a comforter or a quilt that this was backed by. And there's a fragment of this actual fabric for sale in one of the cases. But this is an article about the Arthur, Garfield Arthur uh, campaign cotton. I think that's what they called it. And it's interesting because it combines two of their interests. Um, the quilts, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, a collector of quilts is mm -hmm. uh, one of the things he's known for. Uh, and also the presidential men. Yeah. Uh, and here we have it's black and white, but this is all Roosevelt Wilkie stuff. Look at that. Yes. Wilkie happens to be the first candidate, first person I remember hearing about when I was about okay. five as a presidential candidate. So we have uh, Roosevelt for ex-president. I can't read upside. No Franklin, this. Uh, no Franklin. No third term. <laughs> okay, yeah, oh. no Franklin the first, that's it. And here's Eleanor. No soap. There you go. So these are these are some nice little uh, examples of the vast files of, of clippings and magazines that Ben had on hand. I know as as people were going through the house, you know, to disperse the collections, there were just mountains of paper to go through, and it was hard to know what to keep and what to give away, and and so forth. Um, the Carnegie Historical Museum has been the recipient of a number of of Fairfield. Uh, items, some uh, portraits of early citizens and a number of photographs and so forth. So we're grateful to the Taylor estate for that. Tell you what, let's move on down oh, over here. Let's go to these showcases and see what we have. There's the Nixon. Yeah, I don't know how well all this, some of these things are going to show up. Um, I guess in this case we have some World War II patches. Ben was in the Navy, was it, during the war? Yes. CDs. And stationed in New York, he did. Yeah, uh, he did graphic illustration. Based in New York at one point. Yeah, he did. Uh, let me get closer for the mic for you. He did a lot of graphic arts for uh, training manuals and so forth. And I don't know if there are examples of those things here or not. But this case, O oh, has some various uh, patches, of course, and um, some examples of his sketching, some business cards, and so forth. It just it just goes on and on. Here's a picture of Ben with his brother James and his mother. And there's a portrait of James that we'll see in his uh, uniform a little later. The okay, we're looking at a, a bed set uh, that was it was in the guest room at the top of the stairs, as I recall. Yes, it's really familiar to me because the um, the style with this pearled walnut. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the, the pulls on the drawers. Uh, my mother had uh, a, a dresser much like this mm -hmm. and a commode much like this. I don't know what that means about the family history, <laughs> but well, they, they both came, uh, uh, Ben's parents came from Warren, Ohio, okay. as did my grandparents. And so I imagine these being brought west by them uh, on sure. the train when they came as well, young married couples. In going through the photographs, I saw this set in a, in a bedroom but it wasn't the room that it was in at the Taylor's house on South Main. Hmm. So I'm guessing you know, it must have been a family piece. It was a family yeah. piece in the Taylor yeah. family back in Warren, Ohio, yeah. I think. Now, did Lucille do uh, needlepoint? So, 
Uh, I can't tell you that. Okay. I don't remember her working Because I see a, a variety of needlework there on the bed. I remember that the ne that when the bed was in their upstairs bedroom, mm -hmm. uh, the quilts were often displayed here. Sure. So we'd go up and take a look at the quilts. Sure, whenever they got a new one. Right. Yeah. How long did, when did he get started with the quilts, do you know? I'm not sure. Um, I can remember back as far as the 60s, mm -hmm. hearing him talk about the sure. quilts. But and that was before, about, and that's before and anybody was really giving them more than a nodding interest. So I, I'm sure he got some wonderful things for just a couple of bucks. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Yeah. Ben just had a wonderful sense of all kinds of mm -hmm. craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. and this was Speaking amazing. of craftsmanship, let's go to the ship models. I hadn't realized that Ben made ship models. I mean, I knew he did artwork, uh, but here we have a, oh, it's a book that says Ideal Models, Models I Have Built, just various, you know, ship models uh, illustrated. The story of the ship. Yeah, nice graphics. Yeah. Well, that explains a lot of the, the ship paintings that he did when yes. he was in the service. Yeah. Um, you want to grab that little photograph of him? I think the camera can probably zoom in on that. What do we have here? Yeah. Or do, we need, do we need to get closer with it? Okay, we're fine. This is a picture of Ben on the porch. This would be at his mother's house. I recognize the balustrade. Uh, maybe that's that little balcony. I think that's that balcony on the second floor on, what street is that? Um, Briggs? No, <laughs> maybe we'll, it'll come to us, right? Across from the Bethany, Bethany home, kind of catty cornered. Yeah. Anyway, there's Ben carving, and I, is there a date on the back? Oh, of course not. Not on this one. But that's nice to have that, that documentation of him actually crafting one of his models. Right, I'm delighted. Yeah. This was new to me. I had not seen the models. Really? Uh, so, so this is really... Yeah, he's a multi-talented individual. So that's great. Now, while we're in this section... Uh, we have what are known as the Rogers Groups, and Ben has a couple of books here about the work of John Rogers, who was popular, I think, in the, what, the 1880s, 1870s? Yes. And these are significant for a number of reasons. We have a, a copy of this statue in the uh, Library Museum, or the Carnegie, I keep calling it the Library, the Carnegie Historical Museum. It's a young couple getting their marriage license. And Ben had a number of these. Uh, this one's called Weighing the Baby. And, and it, these were all in a Rogers, or Rogers did several series, uh, mm -hmm. one of which was Daily Life. Okay. And it's supposed to have been an, an, an early departure from classical sculpture mm -hmm. in the United States. In American folk art, mm -hmm. he was one of the first to think scenes of daily life were worth doing. Kind of a Norman Rockwell of the 19th century. Exactly. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to restack these so the auction okay. people don't get upset with this. Got to put away our toys. There's another Rogers statue over here called, I think, the uh, examination. Oh, and the little girl is. Like school girl yeah. is being examined. And that one appears to have been weathered somewhat. It's, it's rather rough, and she's missing an arm and part of a hand. Right. And he's missing, he's a, missing hand. a hand. But it's still charming. You, you can, maybe it was in an attic that leaked. Uh, the kid was playing ball. There you and go. Came the hand. Yeah. Now this book here is actually a picture of John Rogers, and um, I guess the main reason I'm holding this up is because of the statue that's right beside him. It's a um, Civil War soldier, which Ben had a Ben had a copy of uh, on the top of his dining room cupboard. They had a pair of cupboards in the dining room that had a number of statues on top. And that's a nice example of one of his pieces. And I'm guessing that that has gone to the uh, Lincoln Museum uh, because Ben was a Lincoln collector, for heaven's sake. I mean, it just, it, there was no end to it. Yeah, lots of the, of the Rogers groups are those ones. Uh, yeah. While we're here, let's take a look at the grandfather clock. Do you know oh. anything about it? Ah, uh, just that it stood at the top of the stairway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beauty. It's very impressive. It's very nice. Brass finials on top and these little colonnettes. It's a lovely piece. Beautiful. The clock I remember is down at the other end of the hall. There's a cuckoo clock that used to hang oh. in the dining room. Oh, and see, yes. this is very typical of Ben. He documented everything. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Frequently on the backs of his, um, his own paintings, you'd see photographs or, or, or notes to himself that would 
tell where it came from. And it looks like um, this is a clock similar to his. This is not this clock. But th these are just clippings. Uh, anything that connected with his pieces, why uh, he would then, like this. Area. And then I don't know what's in here, probably a key or something, but it says, I proudly joined the Radio Free Europe Fund Drive. Ben had a certain uh, altruistic streak. I know he gave lots of money to his church, the Methodist Church, and uh, he was real supportive of community causes, and I'm that sure this, like this reflects be. not only his interest in the dignity of mankind, but also the fact that he kept that envelope and used it for something instead of throwing it away. Now we're coming to the walls with, uh, oh my gosh, here we have buy war bonds. And of course, there's not just one of them, there's three. It's a nice piece. Amazing. And up here, right, right across from George Washington, <laughs> we have Ben's grandfather. Well, that's who that is. Yeah, okay. He was named for B. J. Taylor. Okay. All right. Good. Now, is this a copy that was done, or I we, think that's we don't just a print. That's a print. Yeah, that's not what it Ben's. Okay. Uh, ben also had a number of Courier and Ives prints. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, he had a. We had the big Audubon print in the dining room. Yes. Is that the wild turkey? No, it's another. I forget what it is, but a nice I big, think. nice big Audubon print that was over the dining room table. Um, here, here's the picture of his brother. This is James Taylor. Right. This is Ben's brother that was also in the service. Now, he was in the Army, though, right? Uh, yes, okay. served as a journalist uh, for the Army in uh, Europe. Okay. France, Northern France especially. All right. I don't, I'm sure this is couldn't be Hemingway. But no, I'm no, that, oh, who is that? We. Oh, do we know? It's not Louis Pasteur. It's a uh, French author. Okay. I can't remember. Okay. But there are all these funny portraits like uh, uh, Paderewski and and George Bernard Shaw and and senators. Mark Twain is here. Yeah. There's a. There you go. And then the, the boat paintings. Can we take one of those off and maybe the, we get that get closer. Here, let's do this one. We'll take this closer to the camera. It was when Ben was in the service that he painted these. Okay. And this is a Hudson River scene, and there I think. And just a zillion of these. We, Martha Flintsbaugh, the executor of Ben's estate, allowed the Art Association to go through and, and pick out a number of pictures. We're, go we're going to have a retrospective of Ben's work probably next fall. Uh, we'll have to frame everything, and then those pieces will be put in the hospital uh, on long-term loan. We've been doing that for years. Every year we frame a few pictures and put them in the hospital. And this will be a nice tribute to Ben, keep his presence alive in the community. But this is real typical of some of the things he did. He did uh, ships and architectural studies, and then some of these character caricatures are great. Yes. I'm especially fond of the George Bernard Shaw here, which is a... A collage of paper cutouts. And I don't know, I was sharing with you earlier that those look like they might have been a, a project, an assignment for a class. I, I, I think he had some training. I, I think that's a real good conjecture. But uh, they're real typical of the kinds of things that he did. So let's cut to another section now. So who are these portraits, Marianne? Mark, these are the grandparents of Ben's grandparents. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Um, George Hapgood was an editor of the Western Reserve Chronicle based in Warren, Ohio. Okay. So so, fan so the newspaper business was in the family. Way wow. Back. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah, That's that neat to know. Is. Great. This is his wife. All right. I think these were back over here, weren't they? About oh, this I know. One. This, this is, is weird. But I don't know who it is. But I've never seen a portrait of anyone from this era with his hair down. And here's another one. Yes. This is. Oh, it says Bertie Garrett? Question mark. Okay. And then Ben's initials. Yeah. Is that okay? But he had a quite a quite a collection of photographs. And this would be just the kind of quirky thing that he'd take a hankering to. Right. All right. I'll give you that one. And then here's the Indian chief in full regalia. 
Yes. Wonderful photograph. Yeah. So, and then back the, to the family. Now, are these Ben's parents? Yes. This is Dean Taylor, uh, who came with my grandfather to Fairfield uh, to uh, run the paper that was a forerunner of the Fairfield Lynch. Okay. And this is his mother, who was Jesse Minnelli. All right. Uh, and for, I remember especially for her involvement in the work of the Methodist Church. Sure. And the Jesse Taylor Circle was named for her. Right. So that, that was a nice, a nice tribute to her activism and, and church activities. Well, I think we've pretty well looked at this section. We'll move on to another area here in a moment. And what's the story on this cup and saucer? Well, the cup is a hand-painted cup, and on the bottom it says A.H. 1911. Uh, A.H. is Adeline Hecklinger, who's an aunt of Ben's. Okay. Uh, again, back in Warren, Ohio. And uh, she, my mother, had a similar cup. Oh, done okay. By Adeline. Neat. And so, let's see, in 18, 1911, Ben would have... Been three? Been three years old. So about the time a child can safely handle a cup, she apparently presented them with... But I'll bet it wasn't used very much. <laughs> I bet it would be it's my a, suspicion. It's in pretty good shape. <laughs> it surely is. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> the saucer is from another source. It's a Christmas uh, saucer. 1915 from Aunt Bert. Oh my, that's neat. So the Taylors entertained. Lucille set a beautiful table. They did indeed. And here we have some of their silver. Tell me the story about the tablecloths. Well, uh, yes. Do, should we set this down? I'm nervous. Are you nervous about this? Let's, Let's find um, it. Let's, yeah. This will do and remind me of it. I'm going to put it with Franklin Roosevelt. All right. <laughs> Who is resting there besides James, James K. Polk, if that oh. is any big deal. But. All right, all right. Anyway, um, the tablecloths. This is table, a charming story. Uh, I have of uh, Lucille's a tablecloth which depicts its damask, depicts the Lord's Supper. Oh, my. And uh, attached to it was a little note telling when it was used last and when it was laundered last. Oh, my. Oh, my. And, you know, she it's just, just a treasure. She and just she kept was track very, of stuff, yeah. And, and it's a practical thing mm -hmm. to do because sure. you don't lose, use those things very mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. And you can keep track. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, any pieces of silver or china that oh, have particular my. memories for you? This is all beautiful. What I remember is the beautifully set tables uh -huh. using these things. And sure. You, would be there for Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. And, and that was that typical, uh, you, the family spending Thanksgiving there? Uh, it often happened, okay. yes, especially in uh, in recent years. My mother moved back to Fairfield in her 60s. Okay. So uh, we would often have holiday Great. meals. Great. Right? And then where do you live now? I'm now in Chicago. Okay, so you're not too far. Right, right. Great, great. Well, let's toddle on over here a little bit. Let's see what we've got. Well, the reason we're focusing on this deer mount is that I mean, I've never seen this, but I'm told by reliable sources that at Christmas time, Ben would hang this over the fireplace and put a red Christmas ball on the nose and call it Rudolph. <laughs> he was so wonderful. He had kind of a, 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 is it a cerbic sense of humor? Is that the right there. word? Sounds perfect. Um, and then the, the clock face beside it is interesting because there was this room that nobody knew about. Did you know about his workroom? <laughs> no, but my brother did. Oh, he no, did. Called the room that nobody goes into. Oh. <laughs> See, I was not in the house a lot, but I was in there enough to kind of know where things were. And there was this door at the end of the hall that I just assumed was a closet. And when we were going through pictures to, for the Art Association show, uh, Martha Flintspaugh mentioned that the workroom had been discovered and we, were, we went in. And it was just full of stuff. Much of the furniture here yeah. probably came a lot out of the, of the A lot of the unfinished chairs, things that need caning. Uh, the, the, the clocks that are in fragments, a lot of the oil lamps, picture frames. I mean, he had everything categorized, and the lines were just wall, uh, plastered with cabinets and shelving and all kinds of bric-a-brac and a little of this and a little of that. And that clock face was one of the things that was hanging on the wall. I recall that specifically. There must be 10 or 15 clocks here. Oh, yeah. There. He was yeah, fascinated with them. Yeah, and so clocks and political memorabilia and antiques of every, every description. I mean, it's just an amazing collection. The pressed glass uh, is another thing that he collected and okay. was knowledgeable about. All right, we'll, we'll take a look at that here in a second. 
It looks like we have a footed compote, or what would you call it? Uh, yes, a fruit bowl on a pedestal or candy or nut dish. I'm not an antiquer. Yeah, and I don't know anything about glass, but, but this it, appears to be part of a set. This is pressed glass, and it's. Uh, and I don't know the design, but I see others in the same pattern, mm -hmm. and I do know that Ben and Lucille collected those mm -hmm. for it's lovely. decades. So, you know another thing that we could get a shot of? If the camera would swing over to that feather tree, the, Chris the Christmas tree right there on that table I'm looking at, that's one of those old feather trees from who knows when. And it's just the gunkiest, most god-awful thing I ever saw in my life, but I kind of like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just the kind of thing that Ben would have, and, and just as a kind of a, a curiosity. It, it has some nice old ornaments and some lights from the 50s, and it's probably 19th century, or turn of the century anyway. Uh, little candles clipped on. But there's just something here for everybody. So Ben Taylor, we miss you, and we're glad to, to be able to... Uh, have this last visit, I guess, and uh, we'll That's keep a chance for people to really yeah really see the breadth see of, of the, this a life work of yeah collecting the breadth here. of this man's interests and certainly he and Lucille were pillars of the community and are missed. So uh, if anybody has a hankering to see this in ten or twenty years, we'll have it on uh, uh, what, what's the word I want in our ar archives at the museum, and uh, we'll keep a permanent record of of the life and, and work of Ben Taylor. So thank you for watching FPAC. This is Mark Schaefer and Marianne Milhone uh, at the National Guard Armory in Fairfield. It's February 18th in the year 2000. Nice goat.